Welcome back then to Kev John's on a Friday. Now, I first met my next guest in a small pub in Carmarthen. I need, I need to explain that, don't I, really? We, it was a charity event. I was amazed at his work. The audience loved him. Ashley Prosser, Magic Ash. Uh, we love magicians on the show. I, I like the song. We of love that, magicians yeah, on good. this show. How did it all start for you? When I was young, Kev, Paul Daniels. Yeah. Uh, I think it was started in the 80s. Um, the Paul Daniels magic show, you know, it is it just him. I was just amazed. I had never knew what magic was, never seen anything like it in my life. And it was real proper entertainment back in the day. And I loved it. And I thought, how the, how the hell could that be possible? And of course, I was only little and I asked for a magic set on, on, on my list for Santa. And I had the magic set. And... On and off, it stemmed from there, Kev, you know, and that's why I wear this badge, because he was my hero, and this is in memory of Paul Daniels, and of course, back then, Kev, Paul Daniels, were, and I suppose David Copperfield, and you had a few others, but they were two of the big names on TV, whereas magic has become a lot more popular nowadays, you know, you, you hear of it and see of it all the time on TV, which is great, and it's, uh, it's made us up our game with a lot of... Uh, magic on TV and you had this series, The Mass Magician Revealed and people were like, did that spoil it for you? I don't think it spoiled yeah. it for us. People don't realise how good Paul was. Uh, no. I, I, saw his, I did see his live stage show. I interviewed him a number of times uh, on radio and it, because of the comedy that he did and the, you know, in, you like this, not a lot. That's it, not a lot, well, brilliant. People don't realise how good a show, how good a magician and showman he was and what he did do as well is he brought some great acts over from the States, not just magic right. acts ventriloquists, he brought some brilliant, and it, he was Saturday Night Television, in the same way that Mo, the Morecambe and White show had been for the previous generation, uh, at the 80s, early 90s, it was the Paul Daniels Magic Show on a Saturday night. That's right, Kev, you see, Kev, a lot of the gigs I do, people always say to me, how did you get into magic? Where do you learn magic? What people don't realise is, magic is much more available nowadays to back what it was then. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have uh, DVDs or anything then, we had VHS cassettes, but a lot of Paul's stuff he would have learnt would have been through reading, you know, and then applying what he read in, into using his hands. And I mean, the guy is just incredible. You can pick up a lot more now with the sources that's available and learn things a lot quicker than what you could then. But a lot of magicians still adore the man and they know the amount of work he's put in, whereas a lot of lay people, the general public, don't realise the amount of work he put in compared to how we can learn magic now and why there's a lot more youngsters into it now because it is. And as you say, the internet is, is a massive inspiration yeah. for young people. My generation, uh, having been, uh, done magic in my early days, uh, the Royal Route to Card Magic, that was the book that everybody Fantastic. wrote, everybody wanted. Yeah, yeah. So have you got a little trick for us today? Absolutely, Kev. Are you sure? Yeah, should me and you try something now. Let's have a go. Obviously, Kev, you've worked in this kind of industry for a long time, and I was just talking to somebody backstage, and they were telling me that you're one of the best card cheats around Swansea. <laughs> so we're going to... My gonna, secret is out. We're going to put this into practice, Kev, and we're going to demonstrate Back. this. Banned from all the casinos, you know. Now, I only ever use a regular deck yeah. of playing cards. Yeah, I don't know cool. if the camera can see that. So we're going to try this, Kev. Let's give him a, a nice mixed-up shuffle first. And make sure that these nice cards... Shuffle. Oh, I tell you what, Kev. Good shuffle. You and my life together, all right? So if I place the cards down there, Kev, yeah. we're going to do a do-as-I-do effect. Okay. So I give the instructions and you copy. Great stuff. Can you cut about half of the cards off, Kev, please? Hey, that's not bad, Kev. Oh, yeah, I think you've got about half of the cards. Half there? Yeah, not bad. So if you pick the cards up, Kev. Yep. I'm just going to copy me, right? So you use this part of the puffy yep. and I'll use this. So we're going to deal a few cards down just like this. Okay. Now, I don't know how much of card handling you've done. You only got a shuffling cards, Kev. This is called the overhand shuffle. Can it'll go there. That's it. Brilliant. And if you take some cards, Kev, then holding them face down, this is face yep. down, this would be yep. face up. So we take some from the top and put them underneath. That's called cutting cards. Right. Okay. And then on top of these cards we've put down, this would be known as dribbling cards. Dribbling. Yeah. So we pick these up. I, we need to try and get that nice and flat. What we're going to do now, Kev, take all the cards in your hand. We're going to imagine now we're playing a game of cards, right? And we've got four players in this game. So start from your left, work to your right. I'll do the same here. I'm not telling you the exact amount, the number, Kev, but I'm going to take four or five cards and I'm going to place them down to my left like this. So you, you start with your left. Hopefully they won't go off. And then we're going to do the same, Kev, and put some cards next to them. And then 
Oh, I'm hoping he's not going to slide off. And we're, go <laughs> we're going to do the same. Just place those down here a sec. I'll place mine down here a sec. And we're going to do the same, Kev, and put some more down next to them. Use that bit there, Kev, okay. if you're running out of space, boy. And then we'll do the same, Kev, and we'll just put... That's it. So we still got some cards left in our hand, yep. right? Yep. Now, the cards you got left, starting with your first pile, which was your, I think, yep. just deal them on top like you're playing a game of cards. So that's my first pile, that's my second, that was my third, and that was my fourth. And we keep doing that, Kev, until we're out the cards. There we are. Happy days. Happy now, days. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do this um, <laughs> so the cards don't fall off. Now, I've been a magician a long time, Kev, and I'm going to demonstrate how my sleight of hand works. This is my first pile. I'm only holding them because they're going to slide off, right? My first card on top here is a king. Hang on, Kev. Hang on. All hang right. on. My next card on top here is a king. No. My next card there is a king, and my next card there is a king. But you see, Kev... Being a magician, I know how to do sleight of hand. I've cheat. not done that, have Exactly. I? Do you know I said at the start, I've heard of a great card cheat? Do you know there's only four of a kind, Kev, that can beat four kings? Turn over your top four cards for me, Kev. <sighs> no! Wow. See, Kev? Now we've, Whoa, now, now we've shown <laughs> that you are the great card it's cheat. Not man. We once heard you was. Yeah. And this is, the fun, this is the fun I like to have with people, Kev. It's a great because trick. I, I watched you work. Uh, it's, it's not just about the, the technical ability to do that uh, trick and to have the sleight of hand or the, the manipulation of the cards or whatever term That's people it. would use. The, the banter and the patter is important Absolutely. to you as well. You, you can't teach that. You, can, you can't. You, you can't. Anyone who has the fingers, I never had the fingers for this sort of magic, so it's, which is why, why I did the stage stuff. But... You, you can't teach the pattern and the banter. And you're a you? master at that, Kev. You, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, you, it's brilliant. You get better at it the more you do it. It's fantastic. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, so of course. So what's next for you? Well, this year has been a great year for me, Kev. I've entered um, something locally in Llandilo called Towie's Got Talent, which uh, one of my uh, followers, I suppose, nominated me for. Didn't know anything about it. It was a local competition. I was the only non-musical to it. Enter. I ended up, I won that. Um, that was a, a good stepping stone for me, then performed on the big stage for them. Um, two weeks ago, I was shortlisted for a wedding award, uh, Best Entertainer of the Year 2017, and I also won that. Excellent. So that was fantastic, and that's increased my bookings mm. a lot. And um, I'm now through to the semi-finals of The Welsh Factor, which is in January. And to, for me, Kev, it's just to carry on doing what I enjoy doing. And my goal is to become a full-time magician by Easter next year. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. But th that's the goal because I've tried to fit it in around my current 9 to 5 job, if what you do like. You do? I'm an electrician for my right. sins. Um, but it's okay, Kev, but it's nowhere near how much I enjoy yeah. and love doing this. You know, it's... And we're nearly there, Kev. That, that's my goal, and it's just to entertain people and just to have fun. I love to have fun. Mm. You know, I've met so many people, oh, I don't like magic. Magic is boring. Oh, no way. Magic, magic shouldn't be boring, Kev. If you've seen magic and it's boring, I would say you haven't really seen the magic as it should be, because magic is about fun, you know. Yes, it spins people out, how the hell did they do that? But it should be fun and it should be entertaining. And to leave that person with a great feeling that they've had a great time. And I suppose you're on that part of your journey at the moment where for, for a while you've just been the magician. You've been at the wedding or the dinner. You've, yes, you've been the yes, magician. Yes. So people come to see the magician. The magician will come to your table. You're at the stage now of becoming Magic Ash. People come to see Magic Ash. And that's Magic what I'm Ash is coming to us. Yeah. Where you become known as a personality rather than Absolutely. the magician. And that's everything, something everybody has to go through. And you, you're well on, on that journey. And well, uh, I would like to think so. Okay, from, as I said, I'm doing these couple of things now yeah. this year and winning these couple of awards I have won which has been you know amazing for me because I can't win a goal for Shut the Fair Kev I'd be honest <laughs> with you you know I was always that unlucky person I was so, so, so but performers comedians and magicians very rarely win these things <laughs> usually they go to singers and that, you know that's you know that's You're to right. be the case I've been involved as, as hosting these events for years well, I never get yeah. involved with the judging but you always that the singer's going to win it I had so much competition and that's how he's got talent some wicked yeah. kids I was only the only non-musical entertainer yeah. to, um, to, to enter and to win it was just phenomenal. Like, Brilliant. you know, I, I had to pinch myself for days after. Did that really happen? It was amazing. And like you said, Kev, I'm trying to get my name out there now, not just the magician. Well, listen, yeah. good luck to you. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you, Kev. Is Twitter, Facebook? Twitter, I'm on Twitter. There's a website, I'm sure. Instagram, magicash16. 
Facebook, I'm on, yeah, uh, Magic Ash Wales is Unique Magician, and I'm also on LinkedIn, which is where I, I get a lot of my work from, yeah. Fantastic. Um, and that's where most of my work comes in from, Kev. Magic Ash, have a great Christmas, have a great December, yourself, thanks man. for coming in. It's great to have uh, Ash on the programme today, a really, really good magician, as we said in the past, we really do like to have uh, live performers and live magicians and singers here on the show. We'll have a fantastic singer coming up after the break, that's next.
Welcome back. That was a lovely song from a guest who we've uh, had on the past here on the programme, the lovely uh, Sean Richards Meyer Nadoleg Eton Thord. Christmas is coming again. You, you wrote the song, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought, you know, well, I've, I've never done a Welsh Christmas song and there's not that many out there, so I thought, why not? Beautiful. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. How yes, you? nice to have you back. It's a, it's a busy time for you. You've yeah. got some exciting projects coming up. Yeah, well, I've got a uh, couple of gigs coming up, but uh, on the 16th now, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm on um, NOS on Lawen on S4C, so uh, that's an exciting one. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's a national audience for you, yeah. isn't it? Well, international now with, uh, uh, with digital television, but certainly yeah. seen all over Wales and a very popular part of uh, S4C's uh, programming lineup. But was it fun to do? Oh, it's really fun, really fun. I mean, I've never had my hair and makeup done for me, <laughs> so that was that was a really exciting part of it. And to get to play with the other musicians and and the backing singers, that was just great. Mm -hmm. Really good fun. I've got your CDs here in hand. We've got uh, Sean Richards. Where do we go from here? And Sean Richards uh, Borderline. Now one is uh, an EP. This is a full album of of your songs, yeah, and there's uh, another album planned as well, isn't there? Yeah, I'm hoping next year perhaps to do a Welsh album and then if I can, you know, get that one done, ho hopefully do another English album. Well, your mum said she got 80 songs, 80 songs. Yeah, I've got the songs there. It's just, you know, <laughs> having time and money to do it. So, uh, yeah. but yeah. I'm hoping. <laughs> what, what do you enjoy? Situations like this, like the S4C programme, which you know, which would have been a, a, a live audience. So in some ways, it's it's kind of a bit, a bit of both, isn't it? Really, yeah. you you you've been filmed for television, but you're working a live audience at a, at a traditional Welsh and also yeah. on and, Or do you enjoy the recording studio or the gigs in pubs, which can sometimes get a little exciting, yeah. can't they? Yeah. Um, well, I I enjoy all of it really. I mean, I love the way the audience can interact with you, you know, like especially. You know, some of the pubs that get really busy, they can, you know, they're all singing along, dancing. Sometimes they knock your stuff over, but, you know, they're enjoying themselves, which makes you enjoy it all the more. Um, but uh, I've always wanted to write for TV and film. That's wow. something I'd really like to do. It's a great ambition to have, and why not? <laughs> yeah, why something not? I've always wanted to do. I like writing horror films. Yeah, yeah Carl Morgan, sing a like, songwriter locally. Carl. Yeah. Carl's written uh, some films. I think one of his songs is used mm -hmm. in, in a Tom Cruise film, which is uh, soon cool. to hit the cinemas if it hasn't already uh, done so. And uh, Carl Jenkins, of course, uh, the That's composer true. from Ben Glove, has done the same. Well, good luck with that. I'm intrigued by the song that you're going to sing for us in, in, a, in a minute. So tell us about that. Uh, the song's called The Happiest of the Loneliest at Heart. And it's basically about, you know, you can never know what's going on in someone's mind, you know, and how they can seem like the happiest person on the planet. But, you know, it only takes one or two people to be, to criticise them or ever, yeah. and it can completely change their Don't outlook and things, Don't you know? We know it. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just about how somebody who could seem so happy could be the loneliest person mm. inside, you know? Well, I'll let you go and get ready for that. And it's been lovely to have Shan Richards on the show uh, this morning. She's going to uh, take us uh, into the end of the show with that song. And it's been lovely to have a company. We'll be back on Monday here on Bay TV with more from the Christmas market and hopefully uh, look back on a very, very successful weekend for the Swans. Who knows? Come on, the Swans. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how right after the spark The 
happiest and loneliest at heart And I could write a symphony in parts With no ending and nowhere else to start Have you ever wondered how right after the spark The happiest and loneliest at heart I lie awake and I hear the thunder Telling me I can't live this way Now my life is tearing me asunder I'm looking back at what I Behind the colors and deep beneath the odds Everyone's a critic in the dark Have you ever wondered how right after the spark The happiest and loneliest at heart And I could write a symphony in parts With no ending and nowhere else to start Have you ever wondered how right after the spark The happiest and loneliest at heart have you ever wondered how right after the spark, the happiest and loneliest at heart?